If you feel like your grocery bill has been getting more expensive, well, the data finally confirms it. Inflation is going up, not down. But the Federal Reserve Bank says you have nothing to worry about because they have inflation under control. Just yesterday, we got the latest inflation report, CPI. And what it said is that inflation has gone up month over month again. It's not falling. Inflation CPI is now at 2.7%. A month ago, it was at 2.6%. And as a reminder, the Federal Reserve Bank wants to see 2% inflation. But this is where the Federal Reserve Bank, economists, Wall Street, everybody says you really have nothing to worry about because the Federal Reserve Bank has inflation under control. And Wall Street is now pricing in a 99.9% .9 chance that the Federal Reserve Bank is going to cut interest rates again next week on December 18th because everybody is so confident that the Federal Reserve Bank has inflation under control. By the way, in case you were wondering, core inflation, which is what the Federal Reserve Bank also likes to look at, is at 3.3%. Now, I'm going to jump into the analysis in just a minute. But first, let's talk about where inflation was and where it was not over the last 12 months according to the data. The top four places where we saw inflation over the last 12 months were number one, car insurance prices. Number two, airfare costs. Number three, housing costs, rent and shelter. And number four, education. And the top three places where we saw inflation fall over the last 12 months are number two, number one, gas prices, number two, rental cars, and number three, electronics. But talking about groceries, the reason why I started this video talking about groceries is because over the last 30 days, we saw grocery prices go up quite a bit. Grocery prices increased by 0.5% in the month of November alone. And one of the biggest rises in grocery costs were eggs. Egg prices have gone up by 8.2% in just one month. So if you feel like your grocery costs are going up, that's why. Now, of course, we've been covering all of this in Market Briefs. Market Briefs is my free financial newsletter where every day my team is breaking down what's happening in things like the economy and the stock market and the housing market, the crypto market, and the global economy into a fun and witty and easy to read newsletter. You can read it in less than five minutes every morning. And we have hundreds of thousands of investors that are reading Market Briefs every morning. It's completely free. So if you have not joined Market Briefs yet, I got the link for you to join down in the description below. Now, the reason why this is interesting and the reason why I want you to understand this is because, of course, the Federal Reserve Bank is the entity here in the United States that is in charge of monitoring our monetary policy. And one of the things that they've been on a mission to do is to control inflation. Now, I said in the beginning of this video that they have set an inflation target of 2%. And of course, we're going further away from 2%, not going closer to 2%. But this is where many people, including the Federal Reserve Bank, keep saying that this is expected. This is expected. This is nothing out of the ordinary. It's just a little bump and we're going to get inflation under control and it's eventually going to fall to 2%. When? Nobody really knows. And why 2% instead of 1% or 0%? Well, the real reason for that is because inflation benefits investors and the Federal Reserve Bank has been known to benefit investors. 2% inflation is just low enough that the average person doesn't notice it day to day but it's still there and it still hurts the average consumer, which is why you need to be financially educated, understand how the system works and become an investor. But now the Federal Reserve Bank is pretty much guaranteed to cut interest rates again, even though we're seeing inflation go up. Now, are there people who have concerns that if you cut interest rates, you can make the inflation problem worse? Absolutely. But this is where the Federal Reserve Bank is kind of saying a couple of different things. On one hand, they're saying, we're gonna keep cutting interest rates right now, but we might change our plan in 2025. This is kind of what they hinted at last week. Last week, Jerome Powell, who is the chairman at the Federal Reserve Bank, met with the New York Times. He did an interview there. And what he said is he's concerned now about our economy. More specifically, he's concerned about the unsustainable rate that our national debt is growing because our national debt is growing faster than our economy. And that's why he said that we need to make changes in 2025, which has me confused as to why we can't make those changes now, the issue is here today. Our national debt is growing faster than our economy today. But why wait until 2025 to start making changes? Why not start those changes today? Now, of course, we don't really get an answer, nor do we have an answer. But that's one question maybe you're wondering as well. Now, we know that 2025 is going to come with a lot of shakeups 
in our economy here in the United States, but also around the world because President-elect Trump wants to change monetary policy. One of the things that he's been talking about is imposing tariffs on many different countries around the world. Now, I have a full in-depth video coming on tariffs soon. Uh, it's uh, going to be a whole historical account of how tariffs impact our economy. I want you to watch that. But what we're seeing happen today is more and more countries are starting to brace themselves for tariffs. Because what a tariff means is it's going to make buying stuff from foreign countries more expensive. So companies might buy less stuff from foreign countries, which could hurt those countries. For example, Canada. The Bank of Canada just cut their interest rates by 0.5%, which is considered a big interest rate cut over there. And the reason why they did that is to prevent their economy from going into a recession when these tariffs go into place. So they're trying to stimulate their economy in anticipation of these tariffs because if America is buying less stuff from Canada, that obviously hurt the Canadian economy. And so they're trying to get proactive from these tariffs. Here's what the Bank of Canada governor said. By the way, that is their central bank there. Think of it kind of like the Federal Reserve Bank of Canada. They said, quote, if those things, meaning tariffs, happen, certainly they will have a big impact on the Canadian economy and will have a dramatic effect on our forecasts of the economy. Now, the reason why you want to pay attention to this is because, of course, many countries and economies are starting to brace themselves for these potential tariffs. Uh, I've already talked about how China's economy is starting to stimulate itself through government stimulus because they're protecting themselves against these potential tariffs. Countries in Europe are also very concerned about these tariffs because, of course, that could impact those countries and push the Eurozone, the European countries into a recession as well. But what this means for you as an investor is, of course, you want to understand how you can find the investment opportunities. Now, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to invest in these foreign countries, but understanding how tariffs can impact the economy, how they can impact certain things, because the reality is when you invest your money, you want to invest your money where the money is going. You want to invest your money where there's going to be future profits. And that is a part of our economy. And of course, our economy is measured through a number called GDP. GDP is a measure of all spending that happens in our economy. Now, this GDP takes a look at the spending that happens from private individuals. It takes a look at the spending that happens from private corporations. But it also takes a look at the spending that happens from our government. The largest spender in our economy is, of course, the federal government. So when the government changes their budget, when the government changes where they invest their money, when they change their economic proposals, that has a very deep impact on many different impacts of our economy. So when the government changes their spending, that impacts the economy, which will impact certain companies, which will, of course, impact certain stocks. So if you're not an entrepreneur, that's completely fine. You want to understand how these opportunities are going to shape up and how they can create unique investment opportunities for you. That's what the financially savvy do. And that starts with you understanding what's happening in the markets. Of course, we covered that in market briefs, but this is where you want to get financially savvy because what's going to happen with many people is they're going to be blindsided. They're not going to understand what's happening. They're not going to understand how they happen. You want to be the type of person that's financially educated to understand how you can capitalize on whatever happens in the economy. Look, inflation is still an issue. Most people don't care about it because they say, well, it's low enough for heading towards this 2% inflation target. So you have nothing to worry about. When in reality, the average person is not able to meet these inflationary things that we're seeing happen. The average person who's relying on a salary has not seen the incomes rise fast enough to keep up with inflation. This is a fact. We can take a look at the last five years between 2019 to 2024. Inflation is 23%. The median household income has grown by around 20%. We can even take a look at the last five decades. It's the same thing. Between 1971 to 2021, the median household income has grown by around 600%, but the prices of many things that you need have grown by much faster than that. The price of a new car has grown by 850%. The price of a new house has grown by over 1,000%. The price of going to college has grown by almost 2,000%. So yes, the prices of things historically have grown faster than incomes. 
which is why you need to be an investor. And I kind of hinted at this at the beginning of the video, but the Federal Reserve Bank is not aiming for a 0% inflation target. It's not an aiming for a negative 2% inflation target to correct for all the high inflation that we have seen. Instead, everybody's patting their backs saying, good job, we have brought inflation down to 2.7%. It's better than where we were two years ago, so we're doing a good job. Except the problem is, for the people that don't understand inflation, which is many people, you're still getting screwed over. Which means you need to get financially educated and understand what's happening. That way you can take advantage of the system. Because unfortunately, this is how our system works. Now you can hate it or love it. I don't really care. I want you to understand it. That way you can actually build wealth that we can actually have some financial freedom. And I'm not saying this for those like, you know, clickbaity terms. I'm saying this, that way you can provide for your family, that way you can provide the health care that you want for your parents because it costs money and health insurance is not enough. That way you can buy good food for your family, that way you can pay for your kids to go to college, that way you can take your wife on a nice vacation. These things cost money. Everybody uses money every single day, but we're never taught how money works. It's kind of crazy, I don't understand. But that's why I want you to understand this because inflation is still happening. It's going to keep happening. And we can see that most people don't care. Inflation is going up. The Fed is going to keep stimulating. Seems weird. Well, you can hate it, love it. You can't control it. But you can understand how to build wealth from it. That's what I want you to understand because financial education at the end of the day is how you can break out of worrying about what's happening in the economy. That way you can build wealth when markets are going up, when markets are going down, and if markets are going sideways. But that requires you to, number one, understand the economic system. Number two, stop spending all of your money so you have money to save, so you have money to invest. And then number three, actually learn how to invest your money. Build an investing strategy and then go on and implement it. And understand the markets go up and down. You will lose money at some point. It's a part of the process. And you got to be willing to learn. And you got to be willing to make mistakes. That's a part of the process. I get this message all the time. Just breathe. I'm worried that if I invest this money, what if markets crash and I lose 50% of my portfolio? Okay, it probably will happen at some point. But that's how you learn. I have gone through market crashes. I've seen them. But we also know that market crashes create more millionaires than any other time because they create an investment opportunity for you to come in and buy when things are cheap. And so, yes, there are crazy things happening in the economy. They will continue happening. I want you to understand how you can find the opportunity and build wealth because in this system, the person that wins is the investor. But we're never taught how to become an investor. Inflation benefits the investor. It hurts the average consumer because the average consumer is just a consumer. Inflation means you got to spend more money to buy groceries. But it also means that your grocery stocks are generally going up. Because when Walmart is charging more dollars, because it costs them more money as well. More dollars are flowing to Walmart, which means more dollars are flowing into the investors of Walmart. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and invest in Walmart, but I'm telling you to understand the system because ha that's how the game works. And many of us are not taught how to win in this game. And with that, I will see you on YouTube tomorrow.